scientists are hoping to gain a greater understanding of the impacts of climate change on the Denman Glacier System, one of the fastest retreating systems in East Antarctica. Joining us live now from the camp is David Knopf, the field leader at the Australian Antarctic Division Edgeworth David Base Camp. Really appreciate you making the time for us uh, from such a remote location. It's, it's great to be able to see you there. Firstly, describe for us really where you are and, and the conditions that you're operating in there. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, and apologies for the wind. As it is, you know, it's, it's actually balmy, plus two degrees out here at the height of summer uh, down in Antarctica. As you said, you're at Edgeworth David Base, the Bunga Hills, about 400 k's away from Casey Station. But the importance of this region is we're up against or right near uh, the Denman Glacier and the surrounds, which is what we're here to study. So you have a team of 27 scientists, many of whom are out and about today. Today we've flown them out using the helicopters, and we've got a plane here as well at the moment to to get them out and around, uh, to study the glacier, to collect samples of, of ice sediments or sediments below the ice, ice itself, rocks from all different regions to, to really try and understand uh, what's happening with the glacier, its surrounds, its its history, uh, and then how it can help predict its, its future. Yeah, tell us a bit more about that glacier. I mean, how large is it? Do we know much yet about whether it is losing ice rapidly or not? Yeah, so the Demon Glacier feeds, I don't know the exact square kilometre uh, of it. You'd have to ask one of the actual glaciologists for that one. Um, but it feeds into the, the Shackleton Ice Shelf. And we do know it is uh, melting relatively fast. And that's one of the reasons we're, we're down here to study it more comprehensively is to find out, is this really just part of a natural pattern? Uh, what's the history of the glacier itself? And then is it speeding up? What rate is it speeding up? And then, of course, what impact it would have on sea level rise if it were to melt faster uh, than in expected uh, or in some sort of rapid uh, rapid situation. So how are you doing that research? What sort of samples are you collecting and, and how are you doing that? Yeah, so what we've been doing, so we've got a main base here at the Edgeworth David base that can hold up to about 40 expeditioners at any one time. Uh, but not a lot of the research actually gets done here. So what we have to do is fly them out to the surrounds of the glacier, up to hundreds of kilometres away at times. Uh, via helicopter or, or via the, the twin otter, the small aircraft we've got. Uh, and sometimes we'll leave them out there as well and, and set up some of the satellite camps we've had. We had a satellite camp out on the Shackleton Ice Shelf, which is what the Denman Glacier feeds into. They were out there for, for nearly a month, 30 days, just short of the, the full month. Um, and what they were doing was drilling through the ice shelf itself, which is 200 metres thick, getting through to the, the ocean below and then another nearly a kilometre down to the ocean floor to take sediment samples of the floor to see what's happening under that ice shelf, the temperatures of the water at the different depths, and then also the actual um, profiles of the ice itself. So the, the 200 metre thick ice shelf, what's the ice like, its consistency, its properties and its history, so we can help understand what's happened over time as that ice shelf's built and now as it's, it's breaking out and, and melting in its natural progress as well. David, it sounds like a serious logistical effort to, to do that sort of work. How do you get out of supplies? It's been going on for a long time now. All the scientists going a bit batty being stuck out there for so long? Not at all. I think in a lot of ways, uh, we're coming to the end of the summer. This has been a two-year program for my, myself and, and a number of the team who, who came out here last year to build the small melons. You can see in some of the video footage you've got there. We, we built the base camp last year. Um, and then it can house up to 40 people. We've been out here, some people, for, for nearly you know, two or three months. Um, it's been fun, uh, but I, feel, I still feel there's, there's a lot of science we could keep doing, and a number of the team would happily stay here for the entire winter and another year to just keep getting more samples and, and trying to understand every little piece there is. But unfortunately, next week we have to pack up the whole thing, and it, it is a logistical nightmare, but it, it's also the kind of fun chaos that uh, many people down here thrive on you always subject to the weather and just now we're trying to work out how we pack this camp up within a week. We've got a plan that maps out, okay, every day we'll do one flight of cargo, one flight of passengers and now looking at the weather forecast, that's uh, probably not going to happen. We might have to do a lot of flights in a smaller number of days to, to work out how to do it. And that is one of the joys of working down here. It, it is quite a dynamic and uh, interesting environment, not just the environment, but the, the operational environment itself.